fabulous day it is a Wednesday my day off Woo! <laughs> all right it is I'm telling you the weather the last couple weeks have been insane we've been going from extremo hot to where it's like 80 some degrees to like <clears throat> one day it seems like it's really sunny really warm like summer and then the next day it's gonna be like storming cold windy raining overcast storming that's kind of how today is yesterday was extremely warm unfortunately some of the clients houses can be very stuffy um, and I can predict some of the people that have extremely hot houses and I'm like oh I'm dreading the next house so yeah yesterday wasn't very comfortable <laughs> to say the least um, but overall I'm doing pretty well despite the heat at times can be overbearing. I'm not looking forward to the warmer months. I like the sun, but I don't appreciate the heat. Anyway, if you hear something in the background, my brother's downstairs in the kitchen. He is having a conversation with himself. <laughs> oh, my poor, poor brother. <laughs> Hopefully he will stop babbling pretty soon. It, for those who don't know, or new or on, just don't know about my brother, he has autism and he has the tendency to talk to himself. I don't know, he's got like so many voices going in his head. It's interesting because he actually can do different voices, which is <laughs> talented that's a talent and which I can appreciate but sometimes it gets annoying after a while because it's been all of his life and I don't think he's gonna grow out of it but over time you kind of ignore it or get used to it so our families learn to deal with it and people that we know he they know about him so those who don't know that's just that's my brother for you poor Zach <laughs> And yes, we can snap him out of it. We, he knows reality. <clears throat> but. Love my little brother. Um, anyway. So that's why if you hear anything in the background, that's, that's good old Zach. Um, Monday, we had some time in between houses in our appointments because we had two appointments our chiropractor and then mom had her other appointment um anyway we stopped at goodwill i wasn't planning on booking really i was just helping mom to find a dark green blouse to help her for her graduation because that's her colors is the green and i think it's white yeah green and white is the college's color so I was looking for like that dark green found a couple um, that were decent enough and then she also has one previously at home so she'll have to try them out and see if it works but anyway I found some stuff myself and they were cheap so mom's like yeah I'll treat you so <laughs> I found a shirt or a sweater, I should say. Long sleeve. I don't know if you consider it a sweater or not. It was brand new. It still had the tag on it. <laughs> but isn't it pretty? It's just this cream 
color and then it has this like detail. I don't know if you consider that lace or not. I don't know what you would call that. But then it's got these like gems. So yeah, I've got another sweater type thing to wear for fall. I can't obviously wear it now because it's too warm. But um, my friend on here, I'm sure you'll appreciate my sweater on here that she always compliments. I'm assuming you're a girl. I assume. I'm sorry if you're not. But anyway, um, my friend on here that compliments on my sweatshirts and sweaters and always loves my winter wardrobe. I've got another one to add to the collection. Um, but I don't know what the original price of this was, but I got it for $4.99, so 5 bucks. What a steal. So I could take the tags off of this. This is in an extra large color. It's Moscophone. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce that, but that's the color. Interesting enough. But I was like, you never know what you can get. You're going to get at a can, um, I say convenience store, and that's not right. A um, consignment. There we go. I knew it started to see. I was like, where get? Where is it? Um, you never know what you're gonna find. You can find brand new stuff or used. Used is good too. I don't mind used as long as it gets rewashed and wow. Well. So I'm excited. Can't wear it till fall, but that's okay. Got something to look forward to. There's so many other stuff, but I was like, no, this is fine. And then mom had found, because they have like these deals where they have these plastic Ziploc bags. Almost. Trying to aim for my laundry basket. It went up beside it, but anyway. Um, they have like these Ziploc bags like full of whatever stuff in them. Sometimes they have like... Um, bags of like toys or they'll have bags of cards they have like bags of whatever that might be themed it might be like measuring cups or that sort of thing like kitchenware or something like that well mom found one she, I don't know why she wanted this but she wanted the like ringer bell like you ding a bell like at an office desk or a hotel room health like a hotel place she wanted it I'm like okay <laughs> another prop silly prop that annoy people but it came with all kinds of stuff. I can't, like glue sticks, that which we could use at some point. Or whatever. I had stuff that we could use. But it had friends trivia um, quiz type thing. And this is a pack of 100. I actually have one of these, but it's only a pack of like 60 something, I think. But hopefully these are different cards. And it's brand new, guys. I opened it. Let me see here. I opened it, and they're still in its packaging, so, woo, let's see, what is the name of the superintendent of Monica's building? Mr. Trigger. Janet, uh, Janine, the dancer that moves in with Joey, was from which country? Australia. <laughs> So, and they have like fan points if you get answer the first question, you get one point. If you answer the second question right, you get two points. So, this is going to be fun. I like anyone who knows me. I love Friends, my favorite TV show. And eventually I will be doing a Friends haul eventually, but I feel like I'm going to get more Friends stuff. So, So I haven't done it yet, and then I got went over to the puzzle section. I looked at all the puzzles, didn't find one that I particularly like or needed because I know I have plenty of puzzles and I haven't put any of them together recently. So I'm like, yeah. Anyway, but I found this Lego set, guys. This was a steal. Okay. I've been wanting Lego sets for a while now. I've been wanting them for years. Even when I was younger, I didn't just I just didn't get any. My brother always got them. And I was always the one putting them together. Anyway, this is considered like an adult <clears throat> set. It's for 
18 plus of age, I'm like, my niece and nephew could put this, th honestly put this together, so I wouldn't limit the age, honestly. Just eliminate the who's responsible enough to put this type of stuff together. Not, you know, destroy it. But anyway, this was originally, I looked it up from like Walmart or that you can get this originally Walmart or Target. And it was $39.99, $39.99, so it was 40 bucks. I got it for that much. What a steal. And it was brand new. I opened the package. I opened it up. And I still have the, like, it came in these bags. So they were, it was brand new. It wasn't even open. It wasn't cracked. I was surprised, and I was excited. And, yeah, so you get to make all these, and they intertwine with one another. Like, they come apart. I'll show you. Because I actually put it together already. Voila. So, this is it. And it kind of overwhelmed me at first because there were so many pieces. Like, the first couple, I didn't, like, organize the pieces. So, it was hard for me to, like, focus. And it was overwhelming my brain. But this, I learned from that. And I ended up putting it, like, separating the pieces so that it wasn't, like, straining looking for it. I've been having trouble with that. But anyway, you take, like, these. Let's see. Take that out. It's got like these little prongs, so it has all the way around. You can stick them all the way around. You can have them individual, or you can intertwine. So I can change them out anytime I want, and that's a fun, cool idea. And so this is so cute. It's the best type of flower. You don't have to water them, and and if you want to take them apart, you can. And so I just like it, and it also moves. Like both pieces can move. Like it can bloom. <laughs> sort of so that's cool that's already falling apart <laughs> so yeah I just kind of like hey come on now it's falling apart already fascinating but anyway I'm just really excited that I found a good steal a good deal um, and I was able to find you know, Lego set that I enjoyed. I've been wanting to get them for so long. I just haven't invested into them yet. <laughs> I might invest in more in them eventually, but for now, that's what I have, and I'm happy with it. It's displayed on my uh, dresser over there, so or my nightstand, I should say. So yeah, that was a really nice, like, surprise that I got. Mom let me get them, so ever so often she'll let me like buy. A little treat here and there ever so often I'm not like <coughs> excuse me I'm not getting them like all the time oh gosh <coughs> excuse me sorry I've been the allergies are coming in <coughs> mornings are the worst but anyway so yeah once in a great while mom will let me buy something cheap I'm not like the typical um, girl that likes overpriced stuff. I'm like her. It's something in our DNA, I guess, or it's inherited, or I don't know what it is. Something that we just all like. We like, we're all like that in my family, where we'll buy, go to convenient places. Now, occasionally we'll do retail, but I'm not the typical girl that goes out of my way to buy something expensive unless. It's an investment or a special time of the year, like my birthday or something. I might splurge on something expensive, but overall I'm not like, Hey, let's go out and get something really bougie expensive. Nah. <laughs> and you never know, like something like that might happen at Goodwill. Not every time, but sometimes you just never know. So, I'm willing to explore the option and go and see what might be donated there and they're obviously cheap so anyway so that was like a nice surprise um so that was like Monday Tuesday Yen was a work day a hot day and then today it's actually cooler at least I think it is I haven't checked the weather yet I mean upstairs is nice it's uh, nice up here 
It's not stuffy, which is nice because I hate it when it's hot up here. The third level always retains a lot of heat. We did put our AC units in Saturday, thank goodness, because it was extremely hot to over the last couple days. Um, so yeah, just, uh, I'm just happy that we have our AC units in, so now if it gets too hot, excuse me, up here, then we'll turn them on. Oh, I'll do another update for you guys on my dotting. It's getting close to being done, but again, my eyes have been overwhelmed because I'm looking for certain symbols. It's kind of all over the place, and so I get overwhelmed, and I have to say, okay, I'm, I'm done. But I've got a lot of it done. I just have, like, you know, this area is still to do, but I am almost done, and I am so proud of this. This is going to be very colorful and very pretty. This would definitely be, I mean, I definitely will eventually hang these up in frames, but that's not going to be in this house. <laughs> if, I ever, if we ever move, it'll be in the next house. If I have the wall space. Or just wait if I ever get married and then I'll have my, me and my husband will have a house and then I can just put them wherever. Whew, that would be nice. <laughs> well, with obviously... I don't know how well he's going to, obviously we need to agree on decorations and where things are going to go, so obviously it'll be a team effort, but overall, that'll be, that won't be for a while, so anyway, I got to get myself going. I have got chores to do, um, so yeah, I'm going to get myself going. And I need to get downstairs and eat and take meds and that sort of thing. So you'll see me later during Bible time, whether it's today or this weekend. Don't know if I if you ever see me wearing a different shirt, you know I did it a different day. So yeah. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> Readjust this thing. Guys, I'm in my corner, so you know what time it is. Bible time. So, let's get started. As long as this thing is adjusted right. It's not exactly looking great, but whatever. As long as it stays. So, oh, guys, I am still suffering through a lot of, like, neck and back pain. It's not really my back. Sometimes my back gets out of whack, but it's really my neck and shoulder area. It's just like hurt. right now it hurts like right here where my sh shoulder blade is. Uh, but I've been getting a lot of pains just hurting throughout the day and I don't know. I don't understand why. why is this keep, first of all, why does this keep going in and out? Should be autofocused and yeah crazy anyway I, we're just gonna have to deal with this I don't know what's going on um, yeah just pray for me because I'm still having a lot of shoulder and neck pain and my TMJ was acting crazy yesterday where every time I was eating or just moving it like this I can hear it popping and cracking making this weird noise because it's right like right here and of course my ear is right close to it so I can hear it Popping and cracking. Really annoying. Anyway. <laughs> I need to figure out where I am. Okay. Numbers chapter 30. And it's titled Laws Concerning Vows. When Moses summoned the leaders of the tribes of Israel and told them, this is what the Lord had commanded, a man who makes a vow to the Lord he, or makes a pledge under oath must never break it. He must do exactly what he has said he would do. If a young woman makes a vow to the Lord or a pledge under oath while she is still living at her father's home and her father hears of the vow or pledge, <sighs> and does not object, object to it, 
and then all her vows and pledges will stand. But if her father refuses to let her fulfill the vow or pledge on that day he hears it, then he, then all her vows and pledges will become invalid. The Lord will forgive her because her fa father would not let her fulfill them. Now suppose a young woman makes a vow or binds herself with an impulsive pledge and later marries. If her husband learns of her vow or pledge and does not object to the, on the day he hears of, hears of it, her vows and pledges will stand, but if her husband refuses to accept her vow or impulsive pledge on the day he hears it, he nullifies her commitments and the Lord will forgive her. If, however, a woman is a widow or divorced, she must fulfill all of her vows and pledges. A little sidebar called a parent's advice. Under Israelite law, parents could overrule their children's vows. This helped young people avoid making foolish promises or costly commitments. From this law comes an important principle for both parents and children. Parents' advice is worth seeking. His or her experience could save you from making a serious mistake. Parents, however, are encouraged to exercise their authority with caution and grace. How would your parents helped you in your decision making recently? Recently? Oof. Um, I can't really think of anything on top of my head, but just in general, my um parents give me advice anytime that I is needed, and sometimes I take it, sometimes I don't. Just depends on the situation and how stubborn I can be or willing to give take their advice. Um, I admit sometimes I don't, and I regret it over time, but. Yeah, I can't really think of anything on top of my head I can um, come up with, however, but anyway. But suppose a woman is married and living in her husband's home when she makes a vow or binds herself with a pledge. If her husband hears of it and does not object to it, her vow or pledge will stand. But if her husband refuses to accept it on the day he hears of it, her vow or pledge will be nullified. And the Lord will forgive her, so her husband may either confirm or or nullify any vows or pledges she makes to de to deny herself. But if he does not object on the day he hears of it, then he is agreeing to all her vows and pledges. If he waits more than a day and then tries to nullify, nullify a vow or pledge, she will be punished for her guilt. These are the regulations of the Lord gave Moses concerning relationships between a man and his wife, and between a father and a young daughter who lives at home. So that is chapter 30, and so now we're going to get into devotion time. That chapter was actually quite short. Alright. Okay, I think, I don't think I've read this one. Forgive me if I have, but we're just going to go ahead and get into it because this is actually something I'm kind of rereading it and I'm like ooh it's talking about self-confidence and that's something I definitely have a hard time with of having confidence in myself um, mainly because <laughs> I I've always been afraid of a lot of things and um, being vulnerable but honestly it's because I've had such high hopes of of having a lot of things in my life and they just kind of <clears throat> did not happen or wasn't God's will or just things just didn't happen for me and I'm just at a slower pace than my average um, age level of people that are my <laughs> my age so I think this really resonates of where I am in today's as well so I'm learning to overcome a lot of obstacles but it's been hard I've have self-doubt that it's gonna happen and so I have to rely on God to help me get through these pivotal moments in my life anyway this is called no limits and we're gonna go to Jeremiah uh, forgive me I'm seem like I am having a hard time communicating I apologize <laughs> I am trying to get my words straight, but it doesn't always come out the way I would like for it to be. Anyway, um, Jeremiah, Jeremiah. 
Nehemiah. I am forgetting where some of them are. I think it's after, it's after Isaiah. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. The Lord gave me this message. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as the prophet to the nations. O sovereign Lord, I said, I, can I can't speak for you. I am too young. The Lord replied, Don't say I am too young, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord reached out and touched my mouth and said, Look, I have put my words in your mouth. Today, sorry, I'm getting distracted. There's a bug in the corner of my eye. Dude, you need to die. Where'd you go? Great. Now I don't know where it went. There you are. Ugh, it's dead now. <laughs> Can't have bugs crawling around and making more bugs and making messes. Anyway, sorry, forgive me. Look, I have put my words in your mouth. Today I appoint you to stand up against nations and kingdoms. Some you must uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Others you must build up and plant. Pretend, right? Yes, okay. There are two kinds of self-confidence in life. Proud self-confidence self makes some big claims and can lead to some big accomplishments, but arrogance always turns other people off. Humble self-confidence also has big goals, but carries them out while thanking other people who played a role in these achievements. The best experience, sorry, expression of self-confidence sees life as an endless opportunity to serve God and carry out incredible tasks for Him to, and with His help. In fact, God wants our faith in Him to rise and to the point we can fearlessly tackle anything He asks to do to us. The Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a child. You must go to ever sorry. <laughs> you must go to everyone I s send to you and say whatever I command you. Your age might appear to limit your ability in other people's eyes, but don't let sorry, don't put yourself in a box of doubt and shy away from achieving great things. Let your faith grow to the point where your dreams are as big as the, as the God who gives them to you. Hmm. Catch hold of his plans for you and trust him to make the seemingly impossible a wonderful reality. What is the biggest dream you believe God has given you? To put my trust, to fully put my trust in him and to apply and do what he has called me to do. It hasn't been an easy task. I still doubt a lot of times um, what he wants for me. Sometimes I don't doubt that I am called for a purpose. I doubt when and if. I have the right words to say. I don't doubt that he, I can do it necessarily as, as much as I doubt, like, when is it going to happen? And that's what <laughs> my fear is. Of course, none of us really truly know, unless God speaks to you at that moment, when to go and do things when God has called us. It's just a matter of the opportunity to do so. And, of course, God will give us that time and... Um, acknowledgement to know and give us the right words to just say and do when the opportunity arises but it's not always easy to wait it's been a waiting game for many many years for me and I am just still waiting for a lot of opportunities that I want and seek and so <laughs> so my biggest dream is to do the basically God's will and to eventually be married and have kids that's my biggest dream is to do the will and have a job that's um, successful and worthwhile um, my dream is to simply do whatever God has called me to do so what doubts can you surrender to God my fears um, my just any of my doubts that are holding me back from God and um, doubt itself, fear itself, that's the really thing, real thing that really just need to lay down. 
towards God and I am tr daily doing that. That's been a struggle and I'm learning to give it up to him and move forward. <laughs> so yeah, um, that is all of this session. This has been quite a small session, quick session, but nonetheless, it's all good. So think of things. What is your biggest dream that you believe God has given you and what doubts can you surrender to God? So those are some th questions you can think about and write down and give it up to the Lord. So as always, keep on smiling. Stay positive. I love you guys. Jesus loves you. And you'll see me next time, guys. Bye.